I've been enjoying this in a different way than I thought. And it's, you know, things that are off the beaten path, like doing a tribute for Mark Harwell, who's, you know, out of sight, but not out of mind for, for many of us. And some, and I did Grant last week and Diane said, you know, you've talked about Grant, but now I know he's the fastest talker that you've had on the show. <laughs> slow him down. I said, he is a racehorse. You cannot slow him down. You so, know, you know, you know, Jim, it's funny. I did an online thing with uh, Big Dog and Mike, Mike oh, Friedman, yeah. Yeah. and it was about an hour. And I kept coming back to you and your teachings and your staff, you know, Margaret, Beth, Dan, Grant, that, I mean, that was so influential to me. I mean, those, I mean, those are the people I could learn from. And, you know, I just high, held them on the highest regard and I missed them so. And, um, yeah. The, the, the big dog's after me now. You've yeah, wet it. <laughs> so I got to try to, yeah, I don't know. Like I said, I'm enjoying the 15 minute thing. It goes by fast and it makes people say, hey, I want more instead of, hey, you just talk too long. So uh, <laughs> I hope I didn't cut you guys off too much. But like I said, I, I think people perfect. say, say I, I want more because, uh, you know, what, you, it's just been a juggernaut, you know. And, you know, I, I just, I see each of the three of y'all as being a part of that, that's, you know, in a marriage or in a family, you usually agree on 90% of the stuff. The, ch the question is of how good the marriage or the family is, is how you handle the other 10%. A lot of a uh, hammer. <laughs> the hammer is a baseball tool. bat. A baseball bat. That, that is one tool. That is one tool. Yeah. Uh, the other question I was going to ask you guys that I didn't get time for is that whether in your management style or leadership style you you do more based on rewards or threats and punishments. Oh, uh, we're, I mean, we're all, we're all not literally, there's no threats. There's no punishments, just like based on our employees, yeah. you know, getting orders out the door is priority number one above anything, just making sure customers have cards in hands ASAP. So doing that in a, in a way, rewarding our employees, you know, we're, we're always about, about rewarding employees, telling them, you know, hey, good job on this, good job on that, but not really, you know, threatening or, or punishing, but more just pushing and making sure that they're going in the right direction. Um, and we have like re pretty low turnover and um, we've been doing pretty well with our current employees. So yeah, I think, I think the current model we have, is, is pretty strong with my grandfather i don't know it might have been different back in the day but how we do it now is, <laughs> so is definitely maybe a different now. different model yeah yeah well you know, it's funny it, it's funny you bring that up jim simply because it's always been kind of a good cop bad cop kind of vibe and uh, me i'm just like super easy going and mellow as you well know and my dad would be the guy that would drop the hammer i mean not in a bad way you had to deserve it but he wasn't afraid to bring it if you did deserve it i'm not as confrontational as him so we kind of had a good cop bad cop vibe going on well, I think um, one of the other things you brought up that, that really applies to uh, my old teammates is that, you know, like Ryan was saying, I mean, generally people want to do a good job. They don't wake up in the morning and think, how can I mess up today? But if they if they mess up, then, you know, kicking them, uh, there's probably a reason. And what I found, and Rob, you already listed off a bunch of them, you know, the other employees would pull the person aside and say, hey, what's going on? You know, what your your performance is dipping. Is something going on? can we help you? Because, you know, we're all in this together. And so it wasn't like it, it didn't get to my office that much where I had to play the role of Steven, bad cop. <laughs> yeah. But you know, one of the things that I felt is that if they give me an honest day's work, I'm their friend. But if somebody is constantly trying to fool around and, and not do his job, then I can't use him because then he affects you know, everybody else that's working for us and they see, oh, well, he's not doing his work. Why should I bust my balls, you know, uh, work hard when he, this guy is doing half the work. So it's very important to keep the team moving. We, we, we'll take care of them money wise and, you know, whatever. So, but I never get on them if they made a mistake. I tell them what they did wrong and how to and be, be careful not to repeat that mistake. And so long as there is loyalty on their side, there is loyalty on my side. Stephen, in the construction business, there's uh, occasional shrinkage, you know, where the uh, general contractor or the, uh, the, the subcontractors have uh, materials and equipment that sometimes goes mysteriously missing. Yes, and I know. So that's a problem there in the card business. Yeah. You've got millions of cards. If a few of them are missing, what does that hurt? Well, <laughs> it depends on which ones are missing. But what controls did you put in that you shared with uh, Rob and Ryan to run a tight ship that you weren't? That, that things were going to be accounted for and it wasn't going to be tolerated. Well, we have, I installed 16 cameras throughout the building 
and every section of the store is video camera. Okay, simply as that. Okay, and in all honesty, there was a few cases that we caught somebody stealing. There was, I think, two different uh, people. We we fired them, and because we just cannot assume that they're never going to do it again. Because if they do it once or twice, how so many times before they get away with stealing? But that was the end. If we cut them, that was it. Okay, here's the question. You know, when I had uh, caught somebody stealing in my company and uh, we, we uh, terminated the person, but the next morning, the guy's wife was in my office crying Oof. and then he came and cried. Yeah. So my question to y'all is, does that, if you had a situation like that where the wife comes and starts crying, are they going to see Rob? Or are <laughs> oh, no, no, going to no. see Steven? There is no, there is no Rob or anybody. That was just me. <laughs> and yeah. there is no, no future for them. Okay, so the good cop. Uh, also, everybody wants to talk to the good cop. Other employees, that if I get caught, I am out of a job. So you have to understand that that they know that it's over. And yeah. we didn't go to the police. You know, we told them yeah. we could go to the police. We're not going to do it, but you terminated. This is a different version of baseball where you only get one strike. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, the funny thing is. Some of those employees, one of them, actually stops by the shop to say hi every once in a while. Yeah. Okay. And one of them was just in the store a few days ago with his kids. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny. Only how that two works. days ago, he was in our shop with his kids. Yeah. Probably stealing something. <laughs> Don't say that. I mean, that's, uh, uh. you know, it's a hobby that's, that's uh, mostly really, really good people. And the employees, you know, that, that want to work in this industry are, are, are delighted. You know, you, I know the people that work for you are like the people that worked on my team is that they just were excited to be in the industry and get paid to, to work with cars and help people enjoy the hobby. And, you know, they're seeing the smiles on the, on the, uh, the faces of the, of the customers. And it seems like since Ryan's there, you have a lot more face to face with customers now. Is that, am I reading that right? Real quick, I'll jump on that. It's, I always felt it was impossible to scale both e-commerce and retail at the same time, especially when it's basically me being not the mastermind, but the person that has to deal with the cards, basically. It was either one or the other, and I chose to take a global approach far more so than a regional approach, and, and it suited as well, but the storefront suffered for it and because I couldn't do both, and my dad, God bless him, isn't a card guy, and is not the kind of guy that could get to the counter and talk high level with customers that really know their stuff. And when Ryan came on board, it freed me up to do things. He, it's basically like cloning part of my dad and part of me. Right. And he was able to not only maintain the, the warehouse, but bring me at 22 years old, basically, to the showroom, which, you know, that energy, that drive, that passion that I may have lost over the years because I was just so busy building a warehouse of cards. So, you know, that has a lot to do with it. And, uh, you know, now we can scale both, which is very exciting, which we were never able to do before. So, Ryan, did you know you're a kind of a blended clone? <laughs> no, I don't know if I want to be. Just accept it. <laughs> no. accept yeah, it. I guess I got, that's it. So that's it's a, it. A double good, double good. Yeah, you got, yeah. You got the best of your uh, grandfather and the best of your dad. So, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. That's cool. I mean, well, it's, it's, yeah, it's good so far. Yeah. Yeah, well, uh, I'm not going to keep you any longer. I may use some of these outtakes because sometimes when I do some of the after conversation and throw it out there, people like that just as much when it's unstructured. So you guys have been good sports and, <laughs> and I, I probably want to do it again, but let's, let's get it out there and, and get a good uh, uh, reception from the people. And, and, you know, y'all are, I mean, it's 2020 is going to be your best year ever, I'm guessing. Best year oh, ever. By, without by question. Far, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No I think question. people that want to copy your success don't realize that all the, all the preparation and all the, you know, the getting things established and, you know, the team effort of all you guys, it's, it's, you just can't look at it and say, Oh, here's where you are now. Just getting there. The journey was, was onerous. And so again, like I know. tell people, Jim, the best bit of advice I ever got was do what's difficult and do it better than anyone else. I say that all the time and there's nothing truer. You know what, that, that I've never heard that saying before. You <laughs> told me that from you. Oh. And apparently I told you, but I, I don't think I read that anywhere other than the fact that's what I did. And I yeah. think it, it makes it difficult to, to, for people to copy. 
and that they're always looking for a shortcut and there, there are no shortcuts for some of the things you've built. And I, that's probably what Steven did in his construction com, uh, business. When you start doing a bunch of shortcuts, you know, that's, you're liable to have some problems. You know, if you cut corners, cut corners. So, 